These are strange, but I love them. You need shoes with a tie. You need socks on, any kind of socks, and they don't even have to match. How about that? You need a, a chair, any style. It could be office-ish, um, and uh, that's it. Make sure you got water, obviously. You can hydrate yourself before and after, during, perhaps. And it's a leg day. What's up? Shoes and socks. Let's get weird. Let's get creative. Have a little bit of fun developing foot strength, lower leg therapy, a ton of it. Proprioception, something that's essential for our safety. Wherever we go, one of those ninja qualities. And uh, you know we got to get some power moves, as always, the Nomad way. Can't forget it. Um, so we got some big, difficult squat variations for your enjoyment. And upgrade pleasure. I'm gonna take the shoes off first. We're gonna get our way there. Okay. And um, get comfortable somewhere, because we're even going sock free. All right. Pick a comfortable surface. Carpet's cool. Rug, low rug, uh, really anything. So cement would even work. We got the hardwood floor, uh, hard rubber, sorry. All right, take a seat. And the action is going to be, the first thing we're gonna do to get ourselves tired, we're gonna scrunch, this is the bottom of the foot, we're gonna scrunch and scrunch <laughs> and <laughs> scrunch overhead and scrunch. So this is the floor, the foot, toes are going to grab the foot and scoot the foot forward it's going to have this gripping motion so grab the floor and you're you're going to scoot the heel forward a little bit check it out we're sitting right on the front edge all right bring the heels underneath you behind you so you get sort of a cast stretch and then we're going to scrunch the feet scrunch it and just walk it i kind of would i would post that i would lean forward and put some of your torso weight on those knees now you're gonna walk them as far back as you can tolerate, and scrunch and scrunch and scrunch and scrunch and scrunch and scrunch. If you've had lower leg injuries before, it's likely that a therapist had you pulling a towel in in this fashion. But we're gonna travel our feet forward. All right, we got a minute and 17 seconds uh, by Adam's choice. That was the time interval for today. Can't explain it further than that. Time's on. Get those heels behind you. Start walking. Walking. And you can be slow, whatever. You can be more or less aggressive, faster, slower. I kind of feel like a static build up. Do you feel that? Yeah. yeah. So if you're doing this on grandma's wool carpet, <laughs> you'd be generating a lot of static charge right now. Much static charge. And then you would touch grandma's lamp and get a shock. That uh it's not an impossible situation, we'll put it that way. Now, if you've done, I forget workout number it was, but the coin games, you got the cup, you got the coin, I think two leg days ago, right? One leg day ago? Go back and play that one. That's also excellent, slightly more progressed lower leg therapy. So foot, ankle injuries, you can go back and hit that. Um, when you're a little further in your rehab state. Pull it back, keep moving. Three seconds. Awesome. Stand up, grab any part of your chair for support. I'm leaning over a little bit like a deadlift. And, huh, hips back, raising the toes up. Roll onto the floor. Notice I'm not using the knee straightening to do the raising at the ankle. The knees stay in one spot, the feet just lift. Try to make that as isolated as possible. Good luck. A minute and 17 is long for this one. Come on now. You can put a little bit of support on your chair. You can roll up and down or tap or whatever it is, just as long as you're cranking the feet toes as high as you possibly can at the ankle, from the ankle. You feel anything? Mm -hmm. Where? Uh, yeah, top side of the ankle. 
Perfect. Top of the foot, top of the ankle, and all the way up the shin, the front shin, the opposite of the calf, the tibialis anterior. Super important muscle. <sighs> it's way slowing down. Fatigue super quick for me. Ha. Still have 25 seconds left. Oh. It's hard now to not use knee straightening to do it. Oh. Totally failing at this point. Five seconds. Keep it isolated if possible. Oh. oh. Shake around. Very nice. Boom. So now we're narrow squatting with the calf raise at the top. Narrow meaning, you know, narrower than your barbell stance if you have one. It might require a bigger toe angle, but definitely bow the knees out sumo style. Trying to get flat footed. We might not. We might be here. That's okay. Try to get it down. Feel free to use your hands on the ground. And at the top, we're going to hit the calf raise. All right. A uh, minute and 17, let's go. You're moving. In the meantime, I'm getting a better angle. For your informational compatibility. That just means you're not doing the workout. <laughs> <laughs> Talking <laughs> shit. Talking mad <laughs> shit, as always. You know, while I'm at it, I might as well take a sip of my coffee. How about that? Rub it in your face. <laughs> Cheers, and shout out to the friends at the corner of Coanga and Riverside at the 7-Eleven. <laughs> the best service, honestly. The friendliest people you'll ever meet at the 7-Eleven. <laughs> you really work that calf race because we got our shoes and socks off, so now your feet are responsible. For all the little equalizing actions. Woo! Okay. All right. Very nice. Get back to that stop. Grab just one. Start by standing on your weak leg if you got one. I know mine is my left. I'll stand on my left. In three, two, game time. And, you know, maybe don't make it about how many reps you can get. Instead, make it about, like, investigating the skill of doing this thing. Optimize. How can you lighten the load on the standing leg? Where you gotta put the weight? The toes, the heel. How much knee bend on the leg that's doing the grabbing? What's the grab technique like? How do you optimize that technique? And if you're doing rub. Pretty well, and start moving the sock around. How far away from yourself can you pick it up? Wow, that's a burn. And we got 10 seconds left. We made it quite a ways, actually. Impressive. Woo, relax, relax. 
relax, relax, relax. Put your new foot, which should be your stronger leg, right next to the one we were just standing on, and we play the game immediately. Toss it. Grab it. Now, when we're grabbing it and placing it, also just lift. Pretend it's floating on water when you grab it at the surface. Not on a floor that you can put your weight on. Just grab it. Try not to squat into it. Grab it and pull it away. And then give them crazy. Oh wow, that's too far. <clears throat> Don't forget about the standing leg. How can you make it uh, less effort intensive? Find the most efficient way. back into the squats. This time they're wide with the calf raise. So I'm out here. Make sure the knees are like so. So this top of the leg is matching the angle of the lower leg. is matching the angle of the foot that you got going on. The wider we go, the bigger the angle here. The narrower we go, the more parallel our angle. But at all times, keep the knees outside that line a little bit if you can. Try to avoid like much of this. You know, more or less line it up. All right. We get wide, get a nice groin stretch in the thighs, adductors. At the top, we start calf raising and turning the knees out, out with straight legs. Here we go. Let the games begin. Did you know that Bruce Lee had an older brother who was a vegan? Uh, no. His brother's name was Broccoli. Brock? Because <laughs> he's vegan. I see. <laughs> never heard of Brock before this. It's undiscovered. Oh. 30 seconds. Get your reps in. However many you're looking for. And in whatever style. As long as it's controlled and smooth. Oh. Five seconds. Keep moving. Oh, shake. All right, back to the socks. Bring them in. We're building up the setup. To put the socks on, you're going to stand on your weak leg. You're going to pick it up off the floor. You're going to put it on while standing. Whatever the technique is you want. Now we're trying to do that three times on a leg before we put it down. So the last step I just showed where I stood, I shouldn't have done that. I should have taken it off, picked it up, put it on all the way. Hey, I did it. Take it off. Toss it three times. Oh, we don't need time. Just do it three times. Let's go. Begin. Is it cheating to use the floor right? Yes. 
Perdón. Hola. Off. Pick it. Stick it. Tada. Me can fly, are you? Yes. On the leg. Put the sock in front of you. Stand on the now socked foot. Here we go. Try to hit it thrice. I just love that word. I was Googling, like, what do you say for the fourth time? If it's like once, twice, thrice? Mm -hmm. And? I don't know, that's where my story ends. <laughs> <laughs> what a cliffhanger. <laughs> Anyone knows in the comments? Yeah, let us know. How do you say? What comes after? Once, twice, thrice, blank for four times. What is that next thing? Ta da! High fives! Coffee time. Cheers. All right, now we get nasty. Err. Socks are on. Shoes coming back. Boo! Now we're using these as floor padding. So we have to be precise with the aim since we don't have a big mat. So we got this rubberized thing. Now, if we have good aim, these will actually function probably, depending on the cushion of your shoe, probably better than like a yoga mat would for knee protection. Bring the shoe back into the game. First one is a split squat. Put it on four. And I want a big wide stance and I'm gonna range it under that knee. And I'm gonna do dead stops. So get down there. Find out how to relax comfortably on the knee. If the weight on the knee, even with the padding of the shoe, is not good for you, don't do it. Just stay floating and make a paused floating. But we're gonna make it paused dead weight. So like I could raise my back foot if I needed to. All right, that's for now. Rapidly, not rapidly, sustainably rapidly for a minute and 17 seconds. The wider the stance, the better. So get way out there to stretch the hip flexors on that back leg. Begin. Then stop. You put a little power on the way out, you know what I mean? And share it between the two legs. Get relaxed. You know, reset if you got to every once in a while. Move the shoe if you need, or move your stance around the shoe, rather. Just having minimal shoes, the cushion is starting to not feel super protective. <laughs> Bring the knee in contact with that shoe. I'm probably putting like a third of my weight into it in each row. Just give it a little pausation. We know the roll of the front and lower leg is kind of static. We talk about it on hikes. So you can put some upper body weight into it. Right over the lower leg. Use it like a hiking pole. Oh, not bad. Turn around. Flip the script. Healthy and wide. Super wide. Whoa, and I'm out. All right, minute 17, begin. Open your counter stance, back the eye. Back foot is parallel to the front foot, like they're on a track together. Try not to do too much here. I'm definitely not in. I don't know. What that would look like. Track. And there's a balance element to that. If you keep those feet bones in line with each other. Ah, 
Ah. Quads on the back leg. Yeah. Right now for me. I'm going to put a little more weight into my front leg to see what happens if I share the responsibility for a moment where I feel it there. Just dial those equation pieces to that equilibrium. That might be rolling. Might be. <laughs> Three, two, one. Woo! Okay. Mid sentence was a bold choice. I approve. I had an option all the way up to like 32 or something. Oh, it's an 11 to 32. It's like 11 to 32. Yeah, you choose. Pick it up. 17. Minute 17. Here we go. This is where we are. Complete random attack. Oh, wow. I would like to not have to use the chair. But this move, sometimes it can't be the way you want it to be. Um, I'm guessing like a couple reps in, I'll be wrecked and I'll need to start using the chair. And also if you're learning this movement, definitely use the chair for at least the first rep, even if you're like super great balance. Just you can study it without the responsibility of full balance. Now, um, it's right next to the standing foot. Your shoe is right next to the standing foot. Okay? I'm going to drop this opposite knee on top of it. This is a one-legged squat. It's similar to a shrimp squat that you may have done with us, where you hold and you drop down. Okay? It's a shrimp squat, but you're not holding the back foot. Right. So, sorry, it's going to work better actually behind the foot, not right next to it. So there we are. Should look this way. Essentially heel to toe. And I'm really leaning my hips back and my chest way out forward as I drop this knee with precision. Pick it back up. We're keeping the foot off the ground. So don't go to a split squat. Knee on. This foot is still floating the whole time. Let's put it up here. Now I'm I'm putting like my belly skin, rolling it onto that thigh. There's contact kind of at that last little ultra hinged moment. Um, experiment with it. Adam's showing us one way to use the chair. You can figure out many ways to use the chair across the body, in front of the body, behind the body. Just be careful with the supporting arm. You don't like let it get behind you or anything like that. Keep the chair in a nice place, reach in front of the body, side of the body. Be gentle with the supporting structures as well as the working structures. Uh, of course, like I said, use the shoe on the floor and be precise with the aim of that knee. I got my chair nearby just in case. I'm starting on the weak leg, as you should as well. Time's up. Play with it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's no way I'm doing this for the full angle. This time, obviously, we have to put the full weight on that side of the body. Into the shoe! <sighs> yep, totally. If you're using the Nomad Workout app off the iStore. <sighs> you! <sighs> you know this one already. <sighs> this would be uh, accessible only through the Aspiring Superhero mode. So I'll try to use that at the skill level 3. Some shrimp squat variations. Wow. Get those back toes off the floor. That's a tough part, too. It's like a weird hamstring isometric coordinated, situated. Five seconds. And relax. Why was that difficult? Why? That's a tough point. Is that deserve coffee time? Or should we just hit it? Let's hit it. Three, other leg, two, one. And there are many ways to do this one too. The body weight, you'd be extra tall. 
got ankles that do the thing for that for you. I'll bring that stuff. Be all should bent over with the chest and the belly on the thigh like I was talking about before. It's a little more back of the leg. Arm swing like I just did, or no arm swing. If you can handle it, I'm not sure if I can. I foot tap. So it didn't work out all the way. Let's try it again. Barely. 17 seconds remaining. Oh, yeah, we can also wait. The hiking pole. That works too. Ah, oh, wow. All right. Immediately into the wide squats again. This time, instead of the calf raises at the top, we're going to try to maintain the heel lift. So it's, just, it's the same move above the ankle as that one. But now we try to stay there. This might require some more care up here as well, upstream. I feel myself being way more bent over than when I am with my heels down squats, because obviously the balance is in a different spot. Go! Heels off the floor. I forgot. It's cool to touch the ground. Yeah, whatever. Get to your depth. And come up. And you know, do your degree of heel. If Allie was here, it would be like some crazy, unattainable ankle angle. But my calves are just not that powerful. <laughs> so I'll show you this way, the half ass way. <sighs> Bit of a balance challenge, obviously. Less surface area on the floor. Sand our entire body. And even those moments, if you can do the hands down, that's a bit of a load lightener on the lower body. So. I guess no hands if you can. Higher heels than me if you can. Lower squat. All the goods. Hopefully you're beating me on this. Because this is crushing me right now. Oh, okay. All right, congrats, because we're already at the final move. Um, this is the shoe tie challenge. Recall this one? We love the shoe tie challenge. Been doing it for a while. All right, so welcome. <laughs> you need your tieable shoe. Now, uh, Chris yesterday on the kayak trip, he was wearing Crocs, man. The Crocs were nice. Especially when they made a turbo mode. Put the back up. Right. You know, it's, it's a waterproof shoe, obviously. It's got the holes in it. So when we got tanked with water, it's just drained. Mine were waterlogged. See, Crocs. Shout out to Crocs. I don't have any, but they look damn cool. <laughs> These ones, as long as they tie, we're in business. If they're double knotted, get rid of the double knot. Make it a single knot. We're standing up. Shoe is untied. Starts on the floor. Standing on your weak legs. I gotta get my other shoe. <laughs> Untied on the floor. And we're up. And then we pick it up. We put it on however you want to put it on. And then tie that shoe of yours however you want to tie that. Make it a complete tie. Try to have relaxed fingers or wrists. And there it is. How about that? Now you can put the foot down if you like. Um, or keep it floating. And then we come up. We untie it. We toss it. Put it in reverse. All right. So for a minute 17, wow. Well, I guess I'm going to switch my leg now. Because <laughs> doing the figuring out was super fatiguing. 
Minute 17, just keep doing that over and over again. Shoe tie challenge. Pick it up, put it on, tie it. Woo! Untie it, toss it. Repeat, go. You know, we try to really prioritize our focus with the most important things in our lives. So I've been thinking about the technique in which I put shoes on, all right? I put shoes on like this all the time. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, I realized, and maybe you too, I had the same technique for both shoes. The right hand would do one thing, the left hand would do the shoe horning. And I did that with both feet. So asymmetric, right? Then I was like, hold up, let me try the mirror version. And it was totally foreign. I couldn't, like, it was like learning how to write with my left hand or something, my offhand. It was impossible. So I guess the point is, you can gamify anything you do regularly in your life just to distract yourself sometimes from much of the bullshit that flies about in the stratosphere. And also make your brain healthier and your body healthier and all that fun stuff too. Ah, relax. Wow. Uh, slap him. Okay. We did a nice job. Did some super difficult moves, some advanced stuff. I mean, do the other side. We, we only do one side? Yeah. All right. So you're figuring it out. That's there. right. Okay. Other side before that exit. We still got a shoe to put on. <laughs> He's drinking coffee. He's skipping workouts. <laughs> what? Come on. Unacceptable. All right. Here we go. And I almost revealed the finisher. That would have been a spoiler alert. Our other leg and begin. Also, I just provided a, a break <laughs> for everybody. Do you do like one set of fingers as a shoehorn? Do you do that technique? Let yeah. Let me watch you. I do. <laughs> but I do the mirror and think like you said. So if I'm putting on my right shoe, I. Which hand is a shoehorn? The left hand. Okay, I see. But if I'm putting my left hand, the right hand is the shoe. Got it. So yeah, okay, right cross lines. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the most ergonomic. So you do switch. Sometimes or sometimes okay. I put in and the desk. Okay. I find myself doing just this one a lot. Just the one sided version on both legs. Oh, wow. Lower leg, major, major work today. Oh my goodness. Swap today. Oh, relax. Wow. All right, now. Finisher. Shoes on. Uh, come in. Off. Oh, yeah, keep on. Because we got to air out basically. And sweat. Um, and this, you know, I talk with a lot of people, and they've got like the huge support shoe on. And you know, maybe if they're like, like we, some Los Angeles entrepreneurs who may spend. A lot of time in their home, perhaps, doing their professional work. Uh, so I'm like, so what do you wear all day? You know, what's the deal? Oh, I'm barefoot all day. Or uh, I'm in socks. I just walk around the house in socks. It feels so great. And you're training that most of your daytime time uh, with minimal footwear, right? So you're probably prepared to walk around town in a minimal thing. We think it's good for your feet. Of course, there are always outliers, situations where it's not ideal, but for a lot of people of many different age groups and situations and all that uh, can benefit for sure from a less support on the bottom. Like we love Chuck Taylors, but Merrill's for sure. Merrill Vapor Gloves, right? Yeah, Merrill Vapor Gloves. The Bear Access too? Yeah, yeah, many of the Bear Access series, whatever. This is not a paid advertisement. We just love these damn shoes. Merrill Vapor Glove 4. Be careful with it for a couple months, but it's going to become something that's super nice. 
for you. Okay, frogger jumps. We're on the floor, we're touching the ground, we're getting in the lowest comfortable, what we feel is safe squat for ourselves. Ideally, the heels are down, we're touching the floor. From here we launch, straight legs, point the toes like ballet wings. Right. Same stuff we worked on in isolation, turning the knees out as we do that extension. Right. Pointing the toes, triple extension in the sky, that means the knees are straight, the hips are tucked underneath, and we got the big calf raises if we can. Minute 17, you choose your pace. Of course, the, the gentlest right handings that you can shove in a challenge like this for yourself. That usually means quieter also. If you can like tell yourself to make the landings quiet, but probably figure out a lower impact version. So the sound is a direct indicator of that impulse value. Oh, 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 wow. 34 seconds left. It's 2017. Yeah, I'm getting right. <laughs> Coincidence, I think not. Push it. 20 seconds, maybe we can get four reps. Maybe one. Oh, the frogger. The death is so tough. Such big range of motion jumps. Oh, it's so good for us. Keep moving. Heels, toes, heels. Wow. Let's get one more. Everybody up. Hands over. Okay. That was shoes and socks. All right. This is business. <laughs> Um, if you feel anything like we do in terms of how challenging that was, oh, then probably you're going to leave and wake up tomorrow and the next day with some upgrades and the work is done. So just sleep on it, eat something and receive those upgrades, hardware and software. You dig. Words of wisdom. Much love. Grandma's wallpaper. Gotta. Always. Keep shoehorning those feet. <laughs> and uh, stay good. Bye.